Today on Bears TV, we're putting a pause on the 52 FAQ and starting something new. I'm personally gonna put all my efforts into the Bears TV Investigate series on Fridays, and on Wednesdays, we're now going to release Bears TV how-tos. For that, I'm gonna introduce Randy, who's a hardcore reefer and one of my personal go-tos anytime I'm looking to explore a subject further. Randy also mans our Facebook page, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube comments, and all the forums, so it's awesome for all of you to get to know him through Bears TV as well. We're looking to release a handful of how-tos each week in hundreds in the upcoming year. Not only did we bring in Randy, but we also picked up a second editor so we can double the content once they get up to speed. These how-tos will cover everything from do-it-yourself projects to how to select the right gear options for particular system types and sizes, and actual how-tos on how to properly install, set up, and tune the reefing products that you're considering or using. Our goal is to get beyond the bullet points on the packaging and show you what all this gear, additives, and systems are all about. In my mind, eventually every single item on our site should have a video that shows how to install it and how to be successful using it. End of story. So do me a favor and welcome Randy into the mix. This is going to be a pretty fun year. Hi guys, I'm Randy, and today on BRS TV, we're hooking up these flow meters from Neptune Systems Fluid Monitoring Kit to get a good look at how fast water is moving through our plumbing in real time. Between the numerous products that require flow, to the pumps to supply them, the movement of water is like blood in our tank's veins. With the Neptune flow sensors in our Apex controller, we can not only get a glimpse of how fast water is moving through the plumbing, but also have the ability to make accurate adjustments if needed and monitor those changes through historical graphing. We're talking about the ability to know exact flow rates for things like UV sterilizers, carbon and GFO reactors, recirculating skimmers and chillers, as well as the ability to receive email and text alerts when your return pump slows down or if your emergency drain has water pouring through it. There's probably a laundry list of places we could install these sensors where they could provide us with valuable information, but here are some spots that I would consider most important to me. At the top of my list, the return pump. With a sensor here, I can monitor the pump's output and set up alerts if the flow slows down or comes to a complete stop. I'd also consider installing a sensor on my emergency drain, so I'm immediately notified when the primary drain gets clogged, rather than listen for the sound of running water. Other beneficial areas where I could see adding a flow sensor would be a Zeovit reactor, UV sterilizer, chiller, and feeling roller mat, as all of these have specific recommended flow ratings, and I want to be able to dial in the flow as close to those recommendations as possible. For uses like GFO and carbon reactors, biopellet reactors and recirculating skimmers, I'm not looking for that specific flow rating, but more so looking for that perfect amount of flow that makes my GFO tumble just right, or that maximizes my recirculating skimmers contact time. The FMK comes with one one inch and two half inch sensors, as well as a fluid monitoring module. With the included fittings from Neptune, you get a one inch sensor that measures about eight and five eighths inches long and a half inch sensor that's just a touch over four and five eighths inches. As with most of the newer Neptune modules, the FMM also includes a handy removable mounting bracket. I'm going to install a couple of these sensors on a sump example and a media reactor. I've decided to go with PVC for this larger one inch sensor, although soft plumbing can be done just as easily by using spigot by barb fittings like these. Because the sensor threading is British standard piping, Neptune includes adapter unions which will convert the sensor to accept US standard national pipe thread, or NPT. In order to get a good watertight seal on these larger sensors, Neptune recommends using pipe thread sealant paste instead of thread tape, which I'll apply generously on both ends. I don't want to use so much that it ends up squishing out of the fittings. It's important that the sensors are installed with the flow indicator arrows pointing away from your pump to ensure that the turbine inside turns in the proper direction to give you an accurate reading. It may also be a good idea to install the sensor with the sensor wire pointed downward. This will help prevent water from getting into the water resistant electronics inside. With the one inch sensor now in place on my example return plumbing, I can add one of Neptune's half inch sensors to my media reactor. Just like the one inch sensor, the half-inch sensor includes two BSP to NPT fittings, and unlike the one-inch sensor, however, you can use Teflon tape instead of paste to create a watertight seal. I'll make a couple of clockwise passes with the plumber's tape while leaving a single thread clear to make sure that the fitting can start threading evenly. With the fittings securely in place, I can now add the additional fittings needed to adapt the half-inch push connect fittings included on most of our media reactors or to any silicone upgrade tubing that would require barbed fittings like these. 
In order to adapt from slip fittings to push connect fittings, you'll need half inch slip by thread female pipe adapters, three inch sections of half inch PVC, as well as a half inch NPT push connect fitting like this. If you have the BRS silicone tubing upgrade kit on your media reactor, all you need are these half inch spigot by barb fittings where you can simply splice the tubing and insert the sensor. The sensor's now installed and after a leak test, I'll come back to manage the cords by adding drip loops. You'll also see that I installed the sensor on the pump side or inlet side of my reactor. I did this to reduce the chance of media particles getting inside and jamming up the sensor. Prior to getting my new flow sensors hooked into the fluid monitoring module and onto my apex, I want to do a quick leak test of my plumbing connections. Should any of these leak, I can fix it now while I have all my plumbing tools handy and before I finalize the cord and wire management. Let's get on to the next phase of hooking up the FMK by connecting the sensors to the fluid monitoring module and that to the apex itself. The FMM includes a couple of Aquabus ports, four sensor ports which can be used for flow sensors or leak detectors, an accessory port for powered accessories like the PMUP, and a 24 volt power supply. One thing to note here is that the FMM does not need to be powered by the 24 volt supply for the sensors to work. Simply connect the sensors to an open port on the FMM and connect it to any open Aquabus port on the Apex. Before we get too much further, I want to check for any Apex software updates. I can't tell you how crucial this step has been for me to remember, as sometimes these new products do not come with the most current firmware and has left me scratching my head trying to figure out why they won't work properly. You can find new updates from the Apex Fusion dashboard by clicking on the cog icon to expand the upper left menu and then click on the network symbol that looks like a strong Wi-Fi signal. Here is where you'll find any new updates if they're available. Once you verify that your Apex is up to date, you'll need to go back and check the firmware of the FMM and update it if necessary. To navigate there, you can go back to your Apex Fusion dashboard, expand the menu again, and find the modules icon. Scroll down until you find the new FMM module. You'll see either the words old or OK. If it states old, then click on that module. The Apex will navigate you to the FMM module screen where you'll find a drop down menu next to actions where you can click the drop down choice for update firmware. After you've completed both firmware update checks, it's time to check your flow. We've moved the new flow sensor tiles down from the unused tiles menu and you can already see that we're registering gallons per hour from our sensors. As a frame of reference, I'm using the CJ Synchro Silent 3.5, which is rated at 660 gallons per hour, but the Neptune Apex is telling us what we're really getting. As with nearly every piece of equipment on our tanks, there is some general maintenance that you'll want to keep up with for your FMK. The one that always gets me is remembering to keep your firmware updated. Along with that, general cleanliness on the outside of the sensor housing, as well as occasionally removing the sensor to inspect and clean any clogs or buildup over time. Well guys, that wraps up this installation. If you have more questions, please don't keep them to yourself because that's what this team of reefers lives for. Give us a quick call or email, and if you need your answer in the next 60 seconds, hit us up with a chat. See you on the next episode of BRS TV.